Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We have given a time for 16, 6.15 and we are 5 minutes ahead of 6.15. We are going to start the program. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It's a great honor for me to welcome you all. All the candidates, my executive team, Vice President BCMA, Brother Skundar Khan, Vice President Planning, Malik Irfan, my fellow directors of this very branch, Mr. Avnit Tour, Mr. Gori Hog, Mr. Suptaliwal, and Ms. Parveer Handa. So welcome you all. You are under the umbrella of BCMA. Let me introduce you a little introduction of BCMA. BCMA is a unique, great organization of Muslims which cater the need of Muslims throughout the BC. And I feel honored to serve this organization. And on the same note, I feel humble and honored to welcome you all for the candidates who are running for election for this year 2021. Few of you, one of you or all of you, Allah knows best, would be sitting in the House of Common and you would be our wife. The purpose of tonight, our gathering here, that we want that when you go in the House of Common, we should be heard. On my left side, you can say election day, September 20. You are loudest when you vote. We are trying our best in our community that they should vote and they will vote. Before the actual start of program, I would call Bilal to decide the Talawat of Quran. So inshallah we can start the program. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولا سوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحده صدق الله Brother Malik, if there any candidate come, please help me out to have a seat for them. First of all, I would definitely want to thank all the candidates. That was a bit, uh, very squeezy schedule for you to place and to make yourself available. On behalf of my entire team, on behalf of my Muslim community, and on behalf of the Risari Delta branch, I salute you. Thank you very much for coming tonight here and hopefully we're going to have a wonderful evening tonight. The program tonight, the format is that we will be giving from my left, NDP, here liberal. We are waiting for conservative if they can show up and we have one independent candidate as well. So we will give one candidate from all parties a chance to speak about three to five minutes. In these three to five minutes, they can give their action plan. And I would definitely say on my left side, this is a coalition government, which they have enjoyed the power for the last four years. If they can explain a little bit that how we can vote them again. Being a management, we would not be prejudiced. We would be very, very, like no rule. We will give everybody equal chance to speak. The question answer, to make the level of respect maintained, we would not get any direct question from our fellow brothers. It would be a good question come from Brother Program. And again, for question answering, we will give you a one to two minutes to answer the question. For the, for the housekeeping, we have the washroom facility available for both men and the women. And I have my team with me who can help you to go to the washroom if we need it. At the end of the session, we have a wonderful tea 
with the light of good snacks and tonight the hosted by the Canadian Muslim group they have sponsored all this entertainment program i would request all of you to stay behind after that first of all i will ask on my left mr avneet yesli you can come the stage is all yours Thank you very much for the introduction. Salam to everybody here. It's not just the candidates who have a busy campaign schedule and have taken some time out to be here, and I thank them all for doing that. I also thank everybody who has come out to spend some time on this evening with us. Uh, everybody has busy schedules, and we know over the past number of years, life has been getting tougher. It's been getting more expensive. A lot more pressure on working families. And so I appreciate taking the time out to be here, get engaged, listen to your candidates, learn about the platforms, and make your decisions as to who you think will best represent our community of Surrey, particularly here for myself, here in Surrey Newton. I appreciated the note about we're loudest when we vote, we're even louder when we all vote. And so it is very important that that we do on Monday, September 20th, go out and vote. So why vote for us? Well, I'll let me introduce myself a little bit, and I'll speak about my fellow candidates who are also running here in Surrey. and then I'll talk a little bit about some key pieces in our platform. My name is Avneet Johal. I have been here in Surrey Newton for a very long time. I've worked for Customs and Immigration at the Canada Border Services Agency where I learned a lot about immigration and how broken our system has been. Following my studies at UBC, I worked for the Canadian Mental Health Association where I was a director and I was supporting independent living housing programs to support people who were recovering from mental illness. including youth programs right here in Surrey. And I was very proud of the fact that we were able to increase the number of spaces we had for our young people here. For the past 7 or 8 years, I've worked with undergraduate students at UBC. Here in the community, I've been active with the NDP for over 15 years, working on several provincial and federal campaigns, active with youth leadership camps, sports, and all the other things that young people do here in Surrey. And young people do so well. We have so much talent and creativity and intelligence right here at home in Surrey and we have to empower that. We have to support our young people in moving forward and stepping forward. And that's one of the reasons why I'm standing in this election. Some other candidates, fantastic candidates that we have, we've got Sonia Andi in Surrey Centre. Sonia is such a long-time and passionate community activist. She is embedded, enmeshed in the community. She understands the struggles of working people. and is doing her best and has been doing her best for so many years to support also for Raji Thor who is also running with the NDP team and with Jagmeet Singh Raji is an educator she talks every day with students and with families about how we can best support our next generation and that is what we are about the NDP with Jagmeet Singh is fighting for you every single person here we are fighting for our families We are fighting for our communities. Things have not been going in the right direction. Let's give them real help. Now we want to do so much more. Let's take healthcare for example. We are the only major country left in the world with a universal healthcare system that does not include prescription medication. That means we pay the third highest fees for medication anywhere in the world. We said let's support Canadians with the cost of their medication. Other places do it, we can do it too. The NDP voted in favor. The Liberals and Conservatives, as per usual, teamed up against Canadians. And so we have choices to make in this election. It does matter who you vote for. And we need champions who will fight for our communities, fight for our family and fight for our next generation in this election and I urge you to vote for the NDP on September 20th and make your vote count. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Abney. So we are missing three or four candidates. So there is a little change in the format. I will ask all the candidates now to respect the time 3 to 5 minutes. Sonia and Dino it's all go. Please.
Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Uh, first of all, Mazret uh, for being late. I was uh, stuck in traffic. But I'm so, uh, so thankful to all of you for giving me this space uh, to talk to you, to address you. Because I know that uh, you're very involved. You're very involved in the political process and you have a lot of concerns. And I'll just say a little bit about myself. I'm a mental health counselor, a community activist, a social worker, and I have been working in the community for the last 30 years. I'm the founder of Shakti Society and Shakti Awards. And so I hear the concerns of people on a daily basis. And I know that right now we're in crisis mode. We're dealing with several crises. The first one is affordability. We're dealing with the housing crisis, which everyone is talking about. How do you get a roof over your heads? How do you buy your first house? How do you have enough money in your pocket? And so as we deal with the housing crisis, we're also dealing with a climate crisis. You know, we don't need climate scientists anymore to tell us where we are and what risk we face and how precarious these times are. You know, whether it's forest fires, and especially I'm the candidate from Surrey Center, and I can tell you that uh, Central City is the hottest spot in all of Surrey where it gets, the temperatures get exceedingly high in the summertime. And we know that we've had over 800 deaths in the summer, this summer within three days because of the high heat. So we cannot ignore this climate crisis. And I have to say that while we talk about climate crisis, our Prime Minister, the Liberal Prime Minister, Mr. Trudeau, went and spent billions of dollars in buying a pipeline for a product that will soon be obsolete as we move away from fossil fuels. And thirdly, and thirdly, I will say that we're dealing with a mental health and an opioid crisis. You know, right now, I, as a mental health worker, I notice that, uh, you know, people are struggling with mental health, but especially in Surrey Center, it's been years that we've been dealing with a drug crisis. And we cannot ignore that anymore. And even though there is talk of millions of dollars being invested into the community, you and I know how big this challenge is. And more than anything, I have to say that we're all struggling, we're all dealing with, and I know especially you, brothers and sisters, are talking about and worried about Islamophobia. You know, there is fear, there's hatred out there, there's racism out there, and that's unacceptable in a country like Canada. You know, just the other day, as uh, you were celebrating Pakistan Day, I was at Hawthorne Park with some of uh, my Pakistani sisters and friends, and they spoke about how they felt unsafe. You know, they weren't sure if they could meet in the park because they weren't sure if they would be attacked. And that's not acceptable. You know, they're going out there, meeting with friends, and yet you just don't know how unsafe you feel and how bad it might get. And that is something that we have to take a stand against. As leaders, we have to make sure that there is no room for Islamophobia. So I am committed as a social worker, as an advocate, but especially as your future leader, if I get elected, I will be fighting for you, which is something that I've done over the years. Thank you, Sonia. Okay, just a reminder for all of you, as I said earlier, there will be no direct question to the candidate. On my right side, Mr. Prokhan, Brother Prokhan Gailan is sitting. He is the panelist for collecting the question. Anyone have a question, please take a slide. We can help you to give a piece of paper and a pen write your question but you're going to have a per candidate so this is the time you definitely ask the question and this is the reason they are here so i think this is the time for mr gauri hart now and uh, yes he's a candidate from white Trump. thank you sir for coming well, thank you very much and given that we have three representatives of the uh, Federal Liberal Party, I'll say some things and you can fill in all the blanks I leave for you. You're welcome. Absolutely. First uh, issue that I want to speak to generally is, is that of climate change, which I think is, is a very important one, which reflects actually our health and what happens with our health system as well. And the climate plan that we have in place has been reviewed by the International Joint Commission and by the United Nations and has been approved as the best climate plan in the G7 countries. So that is a pretty good position. We've also been endorsed by Dr. Jacquard, 
at Simon Fraser University, he was given us an eight out of 10. And he's looked at the other ones and has not done as well. Which, uh, Mr. Weaver, who was the former leader of the, uh, of the Green Party, has also endorsed our climate plan and the strategies we have in place to deal with that. We're looking at growing more, protecting more old, old growth forests. We're gonna plant two billion more trees. We're gonna protect the, the waters and give safe, safe travel within them. Affordability has already been mentioned and that's obviously a very important issue. And affordability is, has three levels of government involved in it. The local government has, does the zoning and the approvals and the processes. The provincial government oversees those and puts in place that management. And the federal government has a role to play in influencing. So a, a recent study just done by, chaired by Joy McPhail, who reported out on affordability and housing in British Columbia. That report came out about a month ago. And the report basically said, and it was reported to Christian Freeland, was one receiver and the new Minister of Finance provincially received the other, received the report. And basically what they said was, we're not seeing enough cooperation happening in the three levels of government. We've got to find better ways to negotiate, to support and do things. Way back when the Constitution of Canada was put together in 1867, health care was a doctor riding a horse somewhere, and school was a one-room schoolhouse sitting somewhere. Today, those are two of the very most important issues that we have. Those two things were given to the provinces because they knew the Constitution to carry out. If we were doing the Constitution today, they would be seen differently, and the federal government would have a more prevalent position around all of those. Now, the federal government has to use funding to negotiate that, just as the federal government has done on the $10 a day daycare that they negotiated and now have an agreement with eight provinces to proceed and look at and manage that system. That has to be done more with the issues of affordability, as is pointed out in Joy McPhail's study. There, there was some brief discussion about the issue of racism. And I was devastated, devastated when the four Muslims were run over in London, Ontario, by a terrorist. And we had a, a, a meeting at, at Holland Park, a vigil responding to that. And I was told that there are 250, 250 white supremacist groups in Canada. And that frightens me. And I think what's happened in terms of allowing that to happen, we've always known there have been people on the perimeter who saw the world differently. And since social media has come along, they've found a way to connect. We've always had people who lived on the perimeters. Social media has now allowed them to connect in ways that they didn't have before. So now they believe they've got quantum, they've got support, and they could do things differently. We saw the Congress of the United States taken over through social media. People came from Florida and from, from uh, Los Angeles and from Washington State and Massachusetts. They all got together because they felt they could do that. I believe that we have to take stronger action with respect to that. We all have to stand up for it. We also have to stand up in government to manage and support the things that are happening in that. I presented to the Surrey School Board about four months ago a strategy for looking at how we can be more inclusive with respect to the issues of, of, of our country. We're very proud to be a multicultural, pluralistic society. We don't believe in that old notion of a melting pot. We believe in everybody having their own real salad. We've got to respect and honor and take the greatness that comes from the multicultural, the many cultures we have and build on that strength and make sure that strength is a part of what is reflected in Canada as Canadians. We spend too much time talking about differences and not enough time talking about sameness. Wherever we go in the world, most people care about the same things. They care about family, they care about, they care about getting ahead in the world, whether it's getting ahead emotionally or psychologically or spiritually or economically. And those are the things we must celebrate and support. And I believe that our government, I believe that the Liberal Party of Canada reflects those values well and interprets those values in practices, policies, and legislation to include every world, our country, and our world a better place to live in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gordihar. Before I go further, I would like to thank some of our sister organizations. They are here tonight just to say the symbol of our union, symbol of strength that we have gathered. First of all, I would like to say, Brother Abdul Rauf, thank you for coming tonight. Brother Jabbar, thank you for coming. Friend of Pakistan, Kirmir, thank you for coming. 
ex-president of PCA, thank you for coming. And all of you who come, thank you very much. So let's do the balance equation, because on my left, two candidates from NDP, and we have a four candidate from Liberal. Let one more candidate. So you decide who is coming. One more candidate, then we move to independent. Among three of you, who is coming? All yours. Mr. Sukhdaliban. Thank you very much. Mr. Gundal, Assalamu alaikum. And in fact, I want to thank the BCMA and all of you that have come out today uh, to talk to us, have a dialogue with us. In fact, uh, when it comes to having a dialogue, uh, from day one I moved to Sari. Uh, I've been involved in the community. I've been accessible, same number, same salary. Uh, this is the community I, I raised my family. This is the community I run my business. Uh, when it comes to Muslim community, no difference. So when we started to build this masjid, I was here with the fellows at that time. And I'm here today. Anytime community has approached, I have went out of my way to make sure that I entertain that. And that is a very well known factor and I take it as a pride and it's my strength. When it comes to Liberal Party, Godi has mentioned uh, many things, but uh, he touched on, on $10 a day here. Uh, I can tell you, in this side, Sari Newton, and I'm sure this group for Sari Center and uh, Fleetwood Port Health, as well as uh, uh, White Rock, uh, South City. Hundred million dollars came to this riding in one year to help Canada child benefit. To help our young people. Ten dollars a day they get. This is about empowering women. This is about bringing women into the workforce. And one of the candidates mentioned about Islamophobia. I wish the conservatives were here today to defend it. I remember when all four of us were in the in the parliament, Gordy, Ken, uh, Randeep, and myself. Bill, motion M103, came in to acknowledge Islamophobia and to deal with it. That was brought in by Sister Ikra Khan. And I can tell you, not only all four of us, every liberal in the house supported that legislation. And you know who didn't support? It was the Conservative Party except two members, and one of them was Michael Chong, and including the leader of the Conservative Party, O'Toole, did not acknowledge that Islamophobia exists at the time. It shouldn't take people to be cared to acknowledge and do something about it. I take it pride as a liberal. And when it comes to immigration, uh, certainly uh, someone mentioned about uh, immigration policy that is broken. In fact, when liberals took over from conservatives, we tried to fix it and we did many things to fix it. I can take one example. You know, we wanted to bring families together. When it comes to spousal cases, under the conservatives, it was taking four years to unite spouses. We brought down that to one year. Parents and grandparents, it was taking almost seven years. Randeep, if I am right, it brought down to three years. Randeep and myself would came to issue to deal with, with Siri. Conservatives were bringing in only 5,000 applications on parents and grandparents. They were discouraging this category. They dropped the age of the dependent child from 22 to 18, so no parents is willing to come when their children are already grown up. And you know what? We not only raised the age from 18 to 22, in fact, this year alone, we accepted, we are going to accept 30,000 applications. Six times more than it comes come to infrastructure. I'm certain, you know, we can talk about hours. Uh, Simon Fraser University, $40 million we invested as a federal government for a new wing at the SFU. Quantum Polytechnic University, right here, investment in 30 years came to Surrey 
to have a stipend from Surrey King's West, King George Station, all the way to City Land. Any time, I can tell you, any time City of Surrey or the provincial government has brought project forward, each and every one of you, when we were in the House of Commons, we supported that project and every project has gone through and this is the beauty and this is the way that we delivered when it came to Surrey and that is the challenge that we did. In fact, it was better if conservatives were sitting here. They did not bring a single cent of infrastructure money during their 10 years of tenure. Moving forward, when it comes to teamwork, we all work together as a team, team liberal. When it comes to Justin Trudeau as a leader, he has always, always stood when it comes to Surrey issues, when it comes to Islamic uh, issues. He is the one leader that has always been forefront and has come forward. 200, 2015 election. Uh, so, sorry, so you five minutes ago. I will mean, say gone, but I can tell you there's a list of things I can talk about hours. The Liberals have done not only for Surrey, in fact, every Canadian from coast to coast to coast. This is the time now. Proven leadership, Justin Trudeau and the Liberal candidates cross Canada. Please support them, and that is the way to go. And thank you very much. I should have arrived all the uh, president. I would like to thank our president, Brother Tafsa, for being here. You have a busy schedule. Thank you for coming. And before I go, move further, on my right side, we have a sister. We have only four sisters, but it's not mean that our sisters are not very active. But Alhamdulillah, you being four here, you are clear voice for our sister's representation. You will be clear representation that our women are completely involved in the election system and they are like shoulder to shoulder with us. Few of them, they might have it. And we have a little restrictions for the COVID as well for the 50% of the capacity that way they were not here. Also. So this side is done. The candidates are done now. I have in my right side, the independent candidate, which definitely I would say she's the most struggling because she's still independent. All yours. Thank you. What has actually changed for us in Surrey Newton? There were three shootings in the last six days. We are facing a healthcare crisis when we are experiencing wait times of 13 hours plus. There is no such thing as a federal or just a provincial or just a municipal issue. It is an all three level government issue. We know we need new representation because there is hate and racism within our society. We pride ourselves as a country that takes, takes pride in having multiculturalism and diversity. Then why is it that we're still experiencing Islamopho Islamophobia, terrorist attacks across the country? And if we want to talk about empowering women, why are women the ones who are disproportionately affected within society? Why is it that we are the ones who feel unsafe or even going for a walk for five minutes? These are the issues we care about because we need a person who represents everyday people. There is a mental health crisis happening and an illicit overdose crisis happening in BC. We are facing a gang drug crisis within our city that has not been addressed. We are losing youth left, right, and center. Community representatives are the ones who protect our public. Then where is this representation? Why are these issues not being raised in Ottawa? And if we wanna talk about how our system works in Ottawa, I have the experience. I have worked in Ottawa, I understand how it works. I have a business background as well as a law background from Simon Fraser University. I've worked tremendously hard within my riding, born and raised in Surrey Newton, to understand what is the issues that we are facing in society. And working with Kids Help Home that helps youth in our that helps youth in our society, working with domestic violence organizations, we start to understand that these organizations that are supposed to help our youth, help our women, help minority groups, have been asking for multiple years that they need more provincial and federal funding. Why is it that these issues are not being raised within Ottawa? 
We are facing humanitarian and humanitarian crises across the globe. We see that. We see that on news, on media, on how our allies within other countries are being treated and how it is up to us as a country to be allied with other global nations and help individuals within countries who need our help. It is incredibly concerning that in Canada right now, there are our brothers and our sisters who can't express their identity, part of their culture, or wear their religious articling because there are laws in place that restrict that. These are the issues we care about. It is the social and health well-being of our younger demographics, of us, that should be the first priority. We know that there needs to be change in the system. We know that there are people out there in Canada right now who can't express their religion, their articles of clothing. Why is that? How can we take pride in saying that we are diverse and multicultural when we have these issues going on across the country? As an independent candidate, I've seen from the community reaction of how the younger generations are again left out within political spheres. We deserve a chance to represent not only younger demographics, but social issues we care about that are not being addressed or raised. It is time we ask for new representation, someone who is active, who includes all demographics within our riding. These are the issues, but we cannot do it without your support. As an independent candidate, I take pride in the fact that I will represent my community issues in Ottawa. I will make my community the priority. I will focus on my priority issues that are not being addressed right now. Because that's what it means to be a community parliament. Because when we are in Ottawa, it is about working together. It is beyond party lines. I need a chance. Because if you give new representation a chance, we will address these issues. The issues we care about, about being minority groups and uniting together and protecting the marginalized groups of our community, including women, including young children. Thank you. Can you please introduce me? Yes. So my name is Rati Kondo, born and raised in Surrey, Newton. So I just lived down the street. So I've been involved in this community for a long time. My elementary school is Cougar Creek Elementary and high school is Kanoa Secondary School. Maybe, I, I, I'm sure a lot of your children have went there and those schools as well. So when I say this is a grassroots political movement, it is because I care about the community. I speak from knowledge. I've built that knowledge, built that experience, so I can represent my community to the best ability. And that's why I've spent so many years working within our, in my community, going out to Ottawa to learn our political system, to have that knowledge. So when I represent my community, it can, do, it can be to the best of my ability. And it, as an independent candidate, again, I don't believe I'm struggling because there's a lot of community reaction that is supporting me and saying, yes, we do need this change to protect our youth from gang violence, to help the 13-hour emergency wait times. And it is beyond that. There are multiple issues we are facing right now. A climate crisis, global crises that we need to protect other allies, other brothers and sisters in other nations, as well as in Canada, who want to have a freedom of expression of what they can wear. And that's why I'm standing. Thank you. Thank you. Before I move to the question and answers for me, I would like to mention one thing. Tonight, I'm really happy and really proud and humble that under the, this roof of BCMA, we have almost all the sister organizations representative. I would like to thank Mr. Brother Arjuman. I would like to thank Brother Rahat Rao. I would like to thank Brother Kamran Guraya. I would like to thank our trustees, Brother Bishara Dali Sidhu, Bishara Brother Bora Sahab, and all of you. Just forgive me if I forget, forget any name. Just to mention this is the reason, because this is a unique time tonight that all our sister organization, Masalla, and cultural organization tonight here to show the solidarity that we as a Muslim in BC, we are together. Our voice is together. We want that should be heard, that our problem should be solved, for which we are struggling for long. Now I will open the format for the question and answer, and I'm giving this brother to Khan. He will bring the question which has been raised by our fellow brothers and Muslims. And every party has a chance to respond within one to two minutes. 
And if somebody wants to add, we will give another extra one minute. So inshallah, try to respect the time. And as we have another time for Salah is approaching, if we could not finish, which I don't see, we have to come back. Sorry for my... So, sorry, uh, Mr. Gundam, we have too many functions here. Started with questions. Um, I've got a bunch collected from online, from a Google form, and also what's been written here. So I'm just going to start here once again. Let's try to stick to one minute, one person from each party to give an answer. And then if somebody from, an, from another party wishes to respond, again, that's maybe 30 seconds. I'm just saying that in light of time. So the first question that is here is, uh, how would you address the housing crisis? And the uh, Liberal Party, I think, can uh, start first. Mm -hmm. Up there this year is fine okay uh, assalamu alaikum to all uh, the brothers and sisters here i i apologize uh, i haven't been able to introduce myself i think we have too many candidates so this shows you how much the liberals love you and uh, and attend every debate uh, and, and when it comes to the housing uh, i think if you look at the three platforms uh, of the three major parties the conservatives basically say they'll build a I think 500,000 or a million houses but they'll do seven ten and ten year mortgages uh, which already exists, so I don't see how they would reduce uh, uh, any or affordability issues. The second thing they've said is they'll do 15% uh, uh, of federal government lands, they'll reappropriate uh, and make them into housing. I think the NDP also says that to some degree. I can tell you in Surrey, I know the amount of land that the federal government owns. There is no excess land. The only land is some farm land that we have in Cloverdale for experimental farms that the Ministry of Industry does. And when you repurpose that land in any which way, it takes about 10 years because we have to work with the indigenous uh, communities in that area to first find out if there's any land claims. And so it would not help in the affordability crisis. Ours is a very practical, I think realistic, uh, and it works on several fronts. The first part, we've already done a national housing strategy. We took two years to create that. Canada's first ever of its kind. It commits to $73 million. It's already funded uh, over $3 billion just here in British Columbia over the last few years. Uh, we've seen a thousand plus units of affordable rental housing being constructed. So that's on the affordable side. On the, for the homeless and the most uh, vulnerable, uh, we've seen our rapid housing initiative with two and a half billion, with Surrey has had over 100 new units already built and open, and 250 prior. And when it comes to first time home buyers, uh, we have several promises that we've made. Uh, the first being that we'll allow you to do a tax free savings account so you can buy your first home up to $40,000, a rent to own program uh, that we'll also do. Thank you, uh, Rakhandi. Okay. Okay. Does, did anybody want to respond from any of the other parties? Your uh, or from NDP? Again, trying to stick to under one minute. Um, I'm 30 so seconds actually, sorry, it's a response. Assalamualaikum, Khurbi Handal, as from the Surrey New Tenorite. So in terms of housing crisis and the skyrocketing housing for housing prices, we have to understand that when you, when you look into actually purchasing a home, if we look down, if we look at how many taxes we are being charged and given, and the percentages that are being applied, like for example the PTT, we start to realize how high this percentage is. For so for so, so for someone already buying a home and struggling to purchase a home, we see how high of a percentage the taxes are. Apart from all our already of the regulated taxes, we have PTTs that are incredibly expensive. They're about a couple percentages. That means you're paying thousands and thousands of dollars more from your pocket. If we're going to be talking about affordable housing, let's start with what the already process looks like. And again, like I said earlier, it's about working with federal and provincial and municipal governments in order to regulate the housing market as well as the housing prices. And again, we understand that there is a supply and demand issue and it is about increasing the supply for affordable housing but that comes with infrastructure and allocating it accordingly to what land uh, is available. Thank you. Go ahead. Th thank you very much. I will try to be quick here. Uh, the first thing I will share is that uh, our Muslim community is a priority for the NDP and we are happy to give you as much time as you, as you would like and as you need today. In terms of the housing crisis, the same people that brought you the housing crisis are not going to be the people who are going to save you from the housing crisis. Under this Liberal government, house prices have gone up over 50%. Their candidates, for goodness sake, 
are the ones who are helping to further the housing unaffordability crisis. They are land developing, flipping, and speculating, and investing, and taking profits away from hardworking Canadians all across this country. There is absolutely no credibility this government can have when it comes to housing. If you want a government to take action, real meaningful action, on the housing crisis, if you want different results, you've got to vote differently and vote for the people who will be your champions. And that is only the NDP in this country. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go on to the next question now. The next question is to all, to all candidates. Who will raise concerns to remove anti-Islamic bills which are part of the Canadian justice system? Um, that was a question that came in. I'm just going to rephrase that. How will you stand up for religious freedoms in regards to Bill 21 in Quebec? Start off with the uh, liberal. When it uh, comes to religious freedoms, uh, as I earlier said, uh, you know, when it comes to our leader, uh, in fact, time and time again, uh, he has come out and uh, when it comes to Charter of Rights and Freedoms, individual rights are enshrined in our Constitution uh, through Charter of Rights and Freedoms. In fact, this bill, uh, you know, we are uh, working uh, on this and the leader has made it very clear that if we need to uh, take it to the higher courts, uh, we will, and, uh, and to defend uh, uh, the minority rights, uh, not only the Muslim, in fact, uh, any uh, minority, whether it's Sikh, uh, uh, Hindus, uh, uh, Muslims, or, uh, or Jewish, uh, because everyone has, a, you know, articles of faith uh, that goes with them. Before we move to the next question, uh, I would definitely request everyone to stay behind for the refreshment as this brother CMMC who are the exclusive sponsorship for refreshment for you. Stay behind after Magar and Shala we serve a very tasty refreshments. So we don't have time to wait when this bill is already being proposed within Quebec and it is being talked about in incredibly and it is concerning because again, like we are saying, this is our freedom of right to express our religion and wear religious articles that are part of our culture and it is part of our identity, so have that stripped away. And the fact that these are public servants who work within our community tremendously hard, are holding social roles to help the community, but then are being jeopardized and being placed in positions where they don't have the freedom to choose what they are allowed to wear and what they aren't allowed to wear. So that is the issue, because as Canadians, again, we talk about multiculturalism and diversity, but we have these bills proposed and are being proposed and being implemented and it's we have to we have to take a stand. We have to we have to go against these laws. We have to stand up for what is right. And it, it's not about waiting. We don't have time to wait when this has already been talked about. We know Bill C twenty one will be in there soon. So again, we need to stay with our public servants who are working incredibly hard through the COVID pandemic on the front lines for our community, Thank for you, our Barbara. society. Thank you. Uh, from the NDP. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that question. I think that racism, systemic racism, is a huge issue across the board, across the country. And I can tell you one thing, that Jagmeet Singh and the NDP have been champions in fighting racism, calling out systemic racism. In fact, you might recall that when we called out systemic racism in the RCMP, he was kicked out of parliament for naming racism. That is what true leadership looks like, where you have the courage to stand up and speak for what is right. And so we can assure you that we are beyond just saying the right things and saying pretty words. We are about action. And so when we're talking about racism, we know how it impacts all of us as people of color. And that is why we will take a strong stand and not just talk about this, but we'll make sure that the fear and the horror that uh, people have faced, especially in the Muslim community, that cannot happen, that cannot continue in this country. And so we will take a strong stand and we follow our leader who has been the strongest champion in fighting systemic racism. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So the next question. One second. Second, this is a question. We have seen in the past the level of respect and the level of mustard is always gone. So there is no direct question. Second is the time constraint. So anybody have a question? 
After question, please write the question. It will be asked to the candidate. Okay, the next question is directed to uh, Sultaliwa. What are three things you have done for the Muslim community in the past 10 years other than attending events and putting out statements? That's, that's an excellent question you asked. It. The first thing what I did for the Muslim community, I can tell you I was not even in politics when they started to build this masjid. I was with the Muslim community helping Hashmat Ali. Uh, the president is sitting here that they are building on 100 and around 128 Street. I'm the one actually who went to the side with the Muslim community. I'm the one who championed that to make sure that the Muslim, that masjid comes here locally in Sari. On the national, at national level, when the bill came, M103 on Islamophobia, I proudly stood in the House of Commons to support that, to acknowledge Islamophobia and to deal with it. Not only this, in fact, all my friends, we advocated it and that is why we see $50 million fund is being put into to deal with Islamophobia. Thank you. These are the type of things that, that you, I have done and I will continue to do that. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Uh, anybody <laughs> Action, not just talk. And I'm not here to take credit for anybody else's work either. We'll hear the Liberal candidates talk about Bill 103. I can tell you, after that bill was passed, almost zero recommendations that emerged from the report out of that bill have actually been acted upon. $50 million dollars and, and, a, and a conference with the leader that happened if just a talk from the NDP can give you all the talk but when it comes to having action there is nothing happening no, from this uh, party. The candidate, if there is no cross answering, no cross I would yeah. uh, humbly request no cross. All NDP members of parliament voted against that motion because it was the right thing to do. Uh, uh, so we have to look at the action. Thank you. Uh, okay, not, not, uh, not picking on you, but because you've got to leave, the next question is also directed for you. And you can ask. When it comes to gender equality, it is the Liberal Party that brought an equal number of women into the ministry. When it comes to $10 in daycare, it is empowering women, it's giving women the you know, right to go to work and giving them the freedom to go to work and giving them opportunities and when it comes to even on an international level we have given resources to small nations i was in small island where there were women that were given training to empower themselves when it comes to reproductive rights we are the ones that brought in not only the legislation but in fact put resources into that to deal with power, women and power, whether it's at home here or on an international scene. And not only that, in fact, I sit on the International Trade Committee and Radeep sits on that too. Every legislation, every agreement that we form, we make sure the side environment, the women and the LGBT youth communities, thank, thank their you. rights are taken care of. Thank you, so um, for that answer. And any rebuttal from... Okay, 30 seconds for the rebuttal. We want to talk about women empowerment, then let's talk about the fact that since the global pandemic started within Surrey, there has been an increase in 33% of domestic violence against women. There has been a 112% increase in homicide rates before women suffering from domestic violence within their houses that don't have the sufficient resources and organizations to go to and get help. And why that is, is because these organizations, from a report I read, reported in 2019, for the last 13 years have been saying we need more provincial and more federal funding so these organizations that house women who are struggling, who are experiencing domestic violence, family violence, can go and seek shelter too. If we want to talk about female empowerment, then tell me why that those homicide rates are so high within Surrey. Why are the domestic violence rates so high within our riding? And if we want to refine female empowerment to talking about how we're providing daycare because they are somehow restricted to a misogynistic Thank system that says that they can only take care of children and that's why we're empowering, that's not what female empowerment is. It's about eradicating misogyny in our system and helping an allyship with the two LGBTQ+, plus and that begins with actually acknowledging that.
would like to say that uh, what has happened in the Canadian Army, in the Canadian Armed Forces, there have been reports of sexual assault cases for years. And our minister, our defense minister, Mr. Harjit Sajjan, sat with that report and no action was taken. And the action that has been taken is that they have ordered a review of the review. So that is the kind of feminine missing and indigenous women. There has, again, there have been reports, but what kind of action has been taken by this government? We talk about that cabinet, which was a proportional cabinet. We know that three prominent women from that cabinet left under very, under very unhappy, uncertain circumstances, where they were almost driven out. We know that 